Hey guys, and welcome to the seventh video in the Python program tutorial for beginners. In this video, I'm going to talk about if statements and state machines in Python, where I'm going to show you how to set up an if statement and use different kinds of conditions, which we talked about in earlier videos. And I'm also going to show you how to use if statements to create your own state machine, where a state machine is just a, a, a state your program can be in, and then you can change between different states. Uh, depending on some condition you set up for it. So let's jump into the computer. So we're now on a computer again and in, in this video we're talking about if statements and state machines in Python. And first of all I'm first of all I'm going to talk about if statements and to set up an if statement we have like this notation where we check if if some condition is true then we'll print out um, um, a is less than b and in this case our condition is if a is less than b we print out this sentence. And in this case, we print out a is less than b because a is equal to two and b is equal to three. We can also, if we have more conditions, we can do an if else statement. So first we check on this condition is if a is, is less than b. And if, if it's not true, we can check for another condition. In this case, we use the else if, and we check if a is equal to b. And if none of these conditions are returning true, we'll go to the last state, which is just the else, and then we will print out a is greater than b. In this case, a is equal to 3 and b is equal to g as well. So a is equal to b and this sense of, uh, this uh, condition here will, will turn true. We can also do a short notation of the uh, if statement. Uh, as we can see here, this equals to uh, to the first cell up here as, as well, but it's just on one line, so it's a short notation. And we normally use that if we only like need to print out a string or increment a variable and stuff like that. So it will return the same result as the, as the first cell up here. We can also do a short notation of the if else uh, statement, uh, which, is, which is the case here. So we print out a is less than b if a is less than b uh, on this condition. And if it's not less than b, we just print out the else, uh, else, else here. So a is greater than or equal to b if this condition is not true. We also have logic operators and conditions where we can use uh, logic operators for our conditions in the if, statement, if statements. Um, so in the first example here we have three variables now and then we use the AND operators so both conditions have to be true on, uh, for the condition to return true. So in this case A has to be less than B and A has to be less than C for this uh, condition to be true and print out this string. So in this case we'll just print it out so both conditions are true because a is less than b and is also less than c. Um, we can also use the or operator in our conditions. So if we have two conditions again, we check if one of the conditions are true both and, and it will also return true if both of the conditions are true. But if, if none of the conditions are true, it will, not, uh, it will return false. So in this case, we'll just print it out. So one condition is true in this case because um, two is less than three, but uh, but two is is not bigger than than four. So in this case, one of the condition is true. It could have been the other one as well, and it will still return true uh, and print out this string. So the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is state machines and and how we're using state machines in in programming. And the state machines are important because then you can divide your program into into smaller states, and you can change between those states and if certain conditions uh, occurs. So I'm going to explain uh, state machines uh, from this um, figure here, where it's a uh, it's a door example. So the door it could it, it, it can be closed, and then if we use the handle when the door is closed, we will open the door, and then we will transition to the open state. So now our program is in the open state, and if we try to use the key while the door is open, um, nothing nothing happens, and we'll just stay in the same state. But but. If we're in the open state and we use the handle again, we'll close the door and we transition to the closed state. And then when the, when the door is closed, we're able to use the key to lock the door. But then when we're in the lock state and we try to, to, to use the handle, like we can't open the door because it's locked. So we do nothing and stay in the lock state. And then to unlock the door again, we use the key and we go back to the closed um, to the closed state here. So it's possible to transition between different states um, depending on some kind of uh, conditions and stuff like that. And we're going to use state machines a lot in, in programming because it's it's just easier and you get a better overview over your program when you, when you uh, transition between different states and you divide your program into different states. 
So I've tried to implement the, the state machine diagram up here because when, when we're using state machines, we try to draw, draw the, the diagram first. And then after that, when we get the overview over the program, we try to in, implement that state machine in, in code. So I've tried to implement the state machine down in the code here, which is just a, an example. So we start in the state zero, and then our first idle state, which is uh, with these two circles here, which is the idle state. Um, we say that the closed state is equal to one, door open equal to two, and lock door three. So we have three states in this case. And then if we use the handle, it's, it's a one and the key is a zero. So our idle state is, is the door closed. And when we're in the door closed state, like here, we check um, if we're um, in what kind of state, if we're in the door closed state, and we use the handle, we go to the state open uh, door open. And if we use the key when the door is closed, we will go to the um, to the door locked state. And but and if we're not in the in the closed door state, we will check uh, for the for for another state here where we check if the door is open. And when the door is open and we try to use the key, we just pass because then we do nothing because we can uh, lock the door when it's open. Um, and if we use the handle when the door is open, we can close the door again and we transition back to the to the door closed state. And in, in, if none of these uh, conditions are true, we check if the state is the, the door locked state. And if we use the handle when the door is locked, we will pass and do nothing. And if we use the key when the door is locked, we can we can close the door um, and like we can open the door and uh, unlock the door and transition to the closed state. So it's a directly um, implementation of this diagram up here into code and we're going to use state machines a lot in later videos. So that's pretty much it for, for this video. We are talking about a bit, uh, bit about uh, if statements and if else statements and also like how to use logical operators in, in and conditions. And then we have combined all of uh, these two things together uh, into state machines, which is more like the practical way of dividing your program into different kind of states and transitioning uh, between those states depending on, on some kind of uh, conditions you set up. So that's pretty much it for this video and thank you for watching guys and remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification under the video here so you can help me grow the channel and get more videos in the future. So see you in the next video guys, bye.